as you um, put forward, the 8 to 18 callbacks it takes, you know, to get, um, you know, for conversions to happen and that sales reps give up after the fourth no and 92% of us give up after the fourth no um, and that, you know, how pivotal knowing your numbers and managing your data is uh, in 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 business growth and uh, so we're all kind of grappling with uh, where we sit you know either as as more soul you know practitioners but you know I think the appreciation for uh, the numbers and the data and really giving that um, uh, you know more attention uh, Jill's done a really great job with that so and I personally I love that knife edge and the fact that it's the human factor that's the bottleneck and it's the the thing that everybody needs more help with is to be helped to be made you know help them make better decisions so you know I thought that that was a highlight as well so thank you Leah okay room two who'd like to speak for room two um, that was Jeff and me, so I guess we both can. It was a similar uh, scenario. Most people sort of got stuck on the um, amount of contacts, but it is about also realising that sometimes we can hide behind our CRM systems and don't actually do the personal, you know, how can I help you? Is there anything, you know, in particular I can do? So it is about realising that you do need to at some stage even pick up the phone and get away from it. That's from my point mm. of view. Um, but, yeah, most people were struggling with, with the amount of contacts and then realising mm. what are they. Jeff, is there anything else you wanted to add? The other takeouts from that was uh, people recognised the need to respond quickly to leads, uh, the need to upgrade the reporting that the CRM system was giving them, uh, the need to recognise that it's a complex project and needs to be chunked down and, and approached one piece at a time. You can't just tackle the whole thing and up into small chunks. Um, and, uh, you know, I think those were the, the main issues in addition to that, uh, you know, struggling to get our minds around how you maintain engagement for 8 to 18 touch points. So, uh, those were the issues out of our group. I think there's a couple of points I'd like to add in. And one, which is a well-publicized statistic, is that it costs upwards of seven times as much to get a brand new client rather than to keep an existing client happy. And another point I'd like to make is those numbers around contacts. They are not all phone calls. So they could be a newsletter or a standard email or a LinkedIn message, Karen, or an SMS. Yeah. Now, not everything is appropriate for all businesses, for sure. But the word contact should not be translated to phone call. Yeah, I know that. I was, I was just saying, people forget that next step to actually pick it up. Absolutely. So some of them should be phone calls. I would agree with that, but I would also say not all of them. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Now, room three. Uh, who'd like to speak for room three? Eric, were you there? Denise? Hi, everybody. It's got some noise in the background. If people could just quiet that. There's been a gentleman's voice quiet quite a bit of the time. So if that person could just put on mute, that'd be great, thanks. Um, yeah, so we had some really interesting insights that people shared and we looked at what was the feeling and the thoughts when you thought about the word database and CRM. So that generated quite a bit of conversation and we realised that the database and the CRM is really the heart of the business. And so the question is, is your heart beating? Is it sluggish? Is it, you know, does it need a top up? So we recognise that sometimes we need to take things and go, well, maybe it really is that pot of gold that needs to add value to your business so which was Eric's point we also you know Sarah had a really great insight that she's able to realize that maybe her proposals around it even though she does win 
you know, lots of, of jobs, her proposal might need to have some refinements around this. So Jill brought up lots of conversation in our group and everyone sort of started to look at what's the one thing they could do to, from that. So thank you, everybody in my group. It was very lively conversations. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you, Denise. Yes. We just have a couple more minutes. We're just a, we've got three more minutes until half past nine, and I want to value your time. So, has anyone got one burning question that they want to ask Jill whilst we're here? I've got a really important one, and this is the thing that Jill alluded to, which is the human element, and that is how. And that's something that most people find in their business. How do you get people to engage into a CRM? and avoid the human element of not doing it it's a big one i know yes and i think there's there's a number of different factors to that one is making sure first of all that the crm process meets the user's needs then make sure that the users know how to use it and thirdly make sure that the users understand the benefit for them. Remember the one radio station that every single person listens to all day, every day is WIIFM. What's in it for me? So don't tell me to enter all this data so you, big boss, can get reports. Tell me that I can enter data so my life. So I can get home to my kids, walk my dog, do whatever is important to me in my time. That's that's what matters. So I hope that answers that, JR. Yeah, perfect. 